Today on Hearts of Heroes, the hot weather of the Arizona desert swiftly turns into life-threatening flash flooding during monsoon season. The flash flood is just what it is. It comes in a flash, no warning. The fence gave out, and that's when he actually got swept away. Then, as people in South Carolina escape the worst of the winds in a hurricane, unrelenting rain leaves one family in desperation. My horses were already in water. There are snakes, there are alligators. I was not going to leave them to face that alone. Behind life-saving rescues, there's always a hero. anyone who's been on the receiving end of a rescue, and I'm sure that they would tell you they never thought it would happen to them. Now, flash floods are one of those natural disasters where tons of warnings can go out, but somebody always gets caught in them. That's exactly what happened one late summer day in Apache Junction, Arizona. Let's take a look. Arizona is a desert landscape rich in Native American history. That's why Apache Junction is a fitting name and place to honor that distinction. It's open. Superstition Mountain set over there. And in the summer, we have the lakes, and you're meeting people from all over the world out here. And it's interesting. You never get bored. Daniel Abbott and his wife Karen have lived in this beautiful oasis for more than 20 years. Life here has always been good. I've never wanted to move anywhere else. You know, the summers are a little hot. Apache Junction Patrol Officer Cameron Kellogg agrees. It's hot. It's very hot and sweaty all the time. If you can stand the heat, it's one of the best places to live. And out of the 40,000 people who do live in Apache Junction, fate would bring Officer Kellogg and the Abbots together one hot September day. Better known in Arizona, the middle of monsoon season. So the majority of the year, it's pretty much clear skies. Monsoon seasons, it rains a lot, and when it rains, it kind of floods here pretty badly. Officer Kellogg was well aware that rain was in the forecast. I mean, we, we knew it was gonna rain. We are supposed to get rain Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, with Monday being the worst. We were right in the monsoon season, and you knew a storm was coming in, but it was just a matter of how much rain it brought. The Abbots are used to the Arizona storms. They live on a property close to a large Apache Junction wash. In desert landscapes, a wash is really a dry riverbed. Rescuers advise that people should not walk, bike, or drive through washes if it's raining. Because though it may be dry, Water can be raging down the wash from above and soon engulf the dry riverbed. By morning, Karen felt that the storm had moved on and decided to go and do some cleanup. We have a driveway that goes over the wash. So I told him I was gonna go down and clean the uh, brush out. But when the couple looked out their window, they saw their large trash bin was moving in rising water. They decided to go back and pull it to dry land. I got on one end and he got on the other end of the bin and our back was to the north. The water had come up at that point. It was only all ankle deep, and all of a sudden, our backs were turned. And it came down this road and from up there and went over our fence there like a waterfall, and the pressure was unbelievable. In one forceful motion, both Abbots were suddenly caught up in one of the desert's most dangerous scenarios, a flash flood. Flash floods happen in a flash, just as the name indicates, as heavy rain, sometimes falling on higher ground miles and miles away, starts to collect, it funnels together and can quickly flood the valleys, picking up everything in its path. She took off with the, with the container, and I was yelling for her to let go. She did, and then she went under, and I thought she was going to drown. The current was so bad at that time. I was thinking how stupid this was that I was going underwater. And you're trying to look to see if there's anything anywhere to grab. Plus, there's debris that's coming down with you. As Daniel held on, all he could do was watch Karen be carried downstream. And I'm thinking the natural thing would be to want to go save her. But I knew because of the pressure of that water, if I even stepped away from that fence on my own without getting thrown out there, I would have wound, wound up the same as her, right behind her, going down, maybe drowning. I don't know. 
Despite the force and the debris surrounding her, Karen managed to grab onto a tree branch. That is when neighbors tried to throw Karen a lifeline. They got over there with the rope, and I was trying to reach out at the end of the limb and grab a tree that was closer to the street. I missed the rope, missed the tree, ended up on my back going further down. And then when it got down to where it crosses the street, I was able to roll out or get just close enough to the road to where they felt safe enough to come in and get me. Karen was safe, but the nightmare was only about to get worse. This fence is about ready to go. Was it seconds after that boom, I was, I was in there. The fence went down and off I went. Oh, he can't hold on. The sheer strength of the water now pulled Daniel from the fence that he was clinging to. All you could see was his white hair and his neon yellow gloves. I just said he's gonna drown. So I didn't think he was gonna make it. Coming up, carried by raging flash floods, Daniel is in desperate need of help. He got swept away. I didn't see him anymore at that point. I just kind of went in the direction that the wash was going, hoping that I would catch him somewhere down further. And I was thinking, how am I gonna tell his kids he drowned in the wash? Then, animals caught in flooding, anxious for a helping hand. The older lady called me on the phone, and she was like, can you help us? Is this the Hurricane Cowboy? And I was like, yes, ma'am. But first, something to help you stay safe. The best thing you can do to stay safe around flash flooding is to just stay away. However, if you do find yourself in danger during a flash flood, a few things that can help are to point your feet downstream and direct your body over obstacles rather than under them. The strength of rushing water cannot be underestimated. It only takes six inches of moving water to knock a person down. So take precautions instead of risk. Rescues can put many people's safety at risk. The typically hot, dry desert town of Apache Junction, Arizona, was suddenly facing a very wet crisis. A flash flood was endangering people and threatening homes, and a desperate 911 call to help an 83-year-old man that was caught in the water was fielded to Officer Cameron Kellogg, who headed to the area where Daniel and Karen Abbott live. Daniel was now caught in the ferocious river of water. So I ended up walking along the southeastern side of the wash, basically walking along the bank of it. And then when I finally got eyes on him, the fence gave out, and that's when he actually got swept away. And it took my leg and my body and sent me out like a kite and around the corner, and then that's when my ankle broke. I thought I was gonna drown. The water's pushing you, so you need to get to something that where you can stop and hang on to something and breathe. But it's so fast, you go down again just as you try to breathe, and then you get a mouthful of water. Rescuers say the most dangerous part of being caught in a rushing flash flood is the debris in the water. Dead trees, tires, sometimes even appliances like dryers or refrigerators can be swept off and create peril for those in the way. I had no control. That was the most hopeless moment in my life. Officer Kellogg had no swift water training, but left with no choice, he entered the water himself to find Daniel. He's west now. I just kind of went in the direction that the wash was going, hoping that I would catch him somewhere down further, and he got lucky, and he ended up catching onto a fence. I'm Daniel was now at the mercy of another fence, holding on for dear life, praying that someone would help. I was just happy that he was still above the water, because I hadn't seen him for a good minute or two, and that obviously made me happy that he was still alive. I'm just now reaching him. Um, we're at Vista, just to the west in the wash. I was out of breath. I was hanging on like this. Then, oh, he grabbed me. No, no, I'm just holding on to you. Felt like the hand of God. Can you do me a favor? Wrap your, wrap your other arm around my left shoulder. Yeah, I'm good. Officer Kellogg managed to get Daniel to dry ground, where he soon learned that his wife, Karen, had also survived. Just relief, because I could see him. I just knew he was alive, and he was able to walk. When she saw me, I said, I thought I was going to drown. But I don't know if drowning would have been worse than when she saw me and grabbed me and squeezed me so hard. I thought that was going to do it. The whole ordeal brought the Abbots closer together, and they are forever grateful for the brave action of Officer Kellogg, never questioning his duty. That police officer, 
He's got a family and children and whatever, but he risked his life to save mine. I'm healing up quick. Yeah? That's because you grabbed me. You're getting around. Yeah. It's going to be running the streets soon. <laughs> Good to see you again. <laughs> How you doing? Well, we just wanted to thank you again for yeah. being yeah. in the right place at the right time. Yeah. Oh, boy, I'll tell you. Work, worked out well, so. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Duh. Never in my life did I ever have anything like that happen. Yeah. Well, that, hopefully, that, hopefully, we don't have to do it again, so. That flash flood <laughs> came so fast. I would like to think if I wasn't a cop, I still would have done the same thing. Um, I just kind of let natural instincts take over and help another human being. The dramatic rescue was just one of many for Officer Kellogg that day. Yeah, that was that was only a couple hours into my shift, and um, I think I was still on for another six hours after that, and most of it was, again, just pulling people out of washes. What would we do without our heroic first responders? Coming up, flooding from the wettest hurricane in South Carolina's recorded history threatens a family's horses. My horses didn't have any high ground to go. The people of North and South Carolina are no stranger to tropical storms. So when Hurricane Florence went from a Category 4 to a Category 1 before making landfall, they were relieved. That meant that winds were going to be slower. Now, wind, though, wasn't going to be the issue. Unfortunately, us forecasters were worried about inland flooding, and that's exactly what happened. This system dropping more rain than any tropical storm ever in both North and South Carolina's recorded history. Suzanne and Joel Beverly own a 14-acre farm in rural Conway, South Carolina, and living there is like stepping back in time to a simpler way of life. I mean, 4th of July, we have 4th of July get-togethers at the Riverwalk, the small town parades. You just know most people. The property has been in the family for generations, and it's a home to a lot of inhabitants. But we have always had animals. When the kids were here, they were dragging something home all the time. I don't know what we would do if we didn't have an animal to take care of. Two of our horses were born here. The other one, we've had 22 years. They are family. They're my babies. The Beverlys are all too familiar with the care of their horses, especially during hurricane season. Hurricane Florence is the first one that we have ever had to evacuate. It just was more than we could handle. As the storm lingered for days, South Carolina would be deluged by even heavier rain upstream and more than 23 inches of rainfall, setting a record for the state. It was a minute-by-minute minute worry, but you look out the window, okay, it's, it's up to there now. A few minutes later, it's a few feet higher, and you walk, and you pace, and you worry, and you pray, and get me through this. Hey, God closer and closer and closer and a neighbor of mine said he heard somebody say it was going to rise another foot and I told the wife let's get ready to go. Suzanne and Jolt called their son to come pick them up in his boat but there was one big problem or more accurately three big problems. My horses didn't have any high ground to go. They were already in water. We did bring them in and put them in the barn which was still dry but it was not going to be a safe place for them. Water was still there. And water was not our only concern. When that river, which is right behind us, rises, there are snakes, there are alligators. I was not going to leave them to face that alone. Coming up, not willing to leave her precious babies behind, Suzanne makes a plea for help. The Hurricane Cowboys were in our area, and I called him. So she had three horses that they could not get out, and the water was coming up. But first, something more to help you stay safe. Disasters can happen anywhere, anytime. So the duties of first responders naturally put them into danger every day for our benefit. Whether by fire protection, rescuing from harm's way, or administering first aid, it's our job to ensure the welfare of the community we serve. So take a moment and give a small gesture of thanks to the brave men and women in uniform who risk their lives each and every day to keep us safe. It's the least we can do to share our gratitude with those who give so much for all of us. Thank you.
The people of Conway, South Carolina, hoped that they would escape the wrath of Hurricane Florence in 2018. But after the slow-moving storm crawled over the southeast, a record-breaking amount of rain left rivers overflowing, neighborhoods flooded. Now one family was desperate to evacuate their home, but they weren't about to leave their beloved horses behind. Their family. Two of our horses were born here. The other one, we've had 22 years. I'm going to take care of them. They're going to have something to eat. They're going to have a shelter. But after inland flooding became Hurricane Florence's main legacy in South Carolina, the Beverly's had no way of protecting their horses from rising floodwaters. You know, we have never left before, so I took that for granted. And I was not prepared for what we had to do. When that much water comes around, it was not something I knew what to do. I had never faced that before. During catastrophic weather events, it's not uncommon for citizens or even search and rescue teams to be overwhelmed trying to save people and animals. And now, many state and federal agencies are welcoming the help of nonprofits, often trained for specific rescue work with large animals. I'm the founder of the Hurricane Cowboys, and we uh, started in 2017 with Hurricane Harvey. What we do is we're a rescue group as well as we also send supplies down to these places that are devastated by hurricanes. Patrick McCann is the kind of guy who goes in when everyone else is coming out. And right now, I am walking in water. He had already been on the ground rescuing animals when his cell phone rang again. The older lady called me on the phone and she was like, can you help us? Is this the Hurricane Cowboy? And I was like, yes, ma'am. She gave us her address and said she had three horses that they could not get out and the water was coming up. Suzanne was not about to leave until her horses were safe. She was relieved Patrick and a member of his team were coming to the rescue. I mean, you just get there and it's just houses underwater. I've never experienced anything like that before. It's just wild seeing like the destruction, like trees laid over, power lines laid over. It was just crazy to see how much people had lost through it. My job is to walk to make sure that the road is still good underneath. He has nerves of steel. Earlier that day, an alligator went across our front yard. He walked down a good half a mile through waist deep water to get to our place. How many people would do that for you who don't know you? After they arrived, Patrick and Travis Holstein went straight to the barn to work on a plan that would mean walking or riding the horses out. I was afraid because our horses aren't ridden every day. They're pets. And especially a stranger who doesn't know our horses, doesn't know the quirks. I was really concerned until I saw him ride. The man can ride anything. He put a halter on her and a lead line, and he rode her out. The man's a true blue cowboy. So then Travis and I went ahead and started the march. I grabbed another horse from him, and um, we rode him out the rest of the way. It was a main highway, and we're in water clear up to the stomach of the horse. These horses were not of the best shape. The horses would need to stop to rest. It was hard on me, so I know it was hard on them. For you to have a horse wade through chest high water, I mean, even if a good broke horse and he's never done it, you're talking a lot of muscles they're using. Plus you're talking black, murky water. The water is probably as black as the road bed. You can't see through it. You can't see what you're stepping on. So you don't know if you're gonna step in a hole. You don't know if you're gonna step on a power line. At one point, I'll never forget, Travis made me stop and he's like, don't move. And I was like, why, what's wrong? He's like, there's this big snake going between you and the horse. I'm not gonna lie, I was like, I hate snakes. And as soon as it went on by, he's like, okay, let's move. Patrick rode the horses down the middle of the highway through chest deep water to a point that was dry enough that he had parked. He loaded our horses up. He's a godsend. He was a blessing to us, a blessing. They are a great bunch of people, great bunch of people. And funny enough, heroes often do come in bunches, saving lives of humans and animals alike, even if they don't want the credit. I'm not the hero of this story. No, I'm, just, I'm just a guy. We do this because this is who we are and this is what we do.
Storms like Florence can change your life in a matter of hours. But one thing that we can all count on will always have the bravery and compassion of the heroes that will help us through. I'm Ginger Z. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.